whether you've got 50 or 500 pounds. I'm going to show you 10 amazing watches you can buy right now on Amazon. Yeah, let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Now, I know Mr. Bezos doesn't need much help, but today's show is all about Amazon. Yeah. And in 2023, Amazon has become the place where you can buy everything. Most of my wages goes to Mr. Bezos. Hello. For example, let me show you my recent orders. I bought a set of tennis balls. I bought a waterproof drawstring bag. I bought a, a packet of toilet roll. But of course, the most exciting things you can buy are watches. And as you buy them from Amazon, that comes with a little bit of confidence in case the watch isn't right or you just don't like it and you want to send it back. So on today's show, I'm going to give you 10 watches from £50 to £500 that if I had Amazon vouchers or the money, these are the watches I would buy. Some I've reviewed, some I've owned before, and others that I'm interested in buying in the future. And if the wife is watching this, which obviously she probably isn't, this is a little Santa shortlist for you, wifey, okay? Affiliate links to all the watches today are in the description below. Treat yourself! Or if anyone wants to get you a gift, give them this show. Are you Amazon watch ready? Let's go! Right, so the first category is a watch under £50 and I've actually got it on my wrist now. This is the AE1200. I've talked about this watch to death. For good reason! If you have never bought a Casio before and are looking for the best budget value for money watch that Casio do, then look no further than the AE1200. This puppy's got a 10 year battery life. It's 100 meter water resistant. It has a world time function. Five alarms, stopwatch, countdown timer. The case is plastic, it is silver, but it has a matte finish to it. Therefore, it goes very well with the matte brushed finish stainless steel bracelet. This one's on Amazon for around £35. And for a cheeky stocking filler for Christmas, this is an absolute no-brainer. Right, for £100 or under, my advice is to still go Casio, but get a G-Shock. It would be quite easy for me to say get a G-Shock Square, like the 5610U, but I'm not going to. I'm going to tell you a watch that I want. Let me show you the DW6900, a watch that came out in the 90s. However, with the reference GW6900-1, you get the same case design, but the module has had a massive upgrade. It's now Tough Solar, which means you shouldn't need a battery for at least 10 to 15 years. It also has multi-band 6, meaning it picks up the correct time every early morning, so your Casio is highly, highly accurate. This watch is currently being sold for around £99. It's definitely one I want for the collection, and if you buy it, you'll want to thank me. Okay, the £150 mark. I'm changing brands now, and I'm going to go Timex. They are a brand that are run in America, but owned by North. Norwegians but essentially started as an American brand and I'm choosing a watch that I haven't seen before certainly not many reviews of and would like to get my hands on and we are talking about the TW2 V49700 now this one has the looks of a super compressor diver doesn't it really good really well done very legible dial I love the handset and I love the green crown at two o'clock that turns the inner rotating bezel. It's got a very unusual metal bracelet with a butterfly clasp. The case diameter is 41 millimeters. And I just really love the way the case is sculpted. One thing to point out on the dial, you can see that this is 100 meters water resistant. However, if you look at the pictures of the case back, it says, 50 meters water resistant. Some sort of error there. If it is 100 meters, then I'm all over it. If it's 50, then it goes against the entire design. This watch is quartz based, but for 144 pounds, you're getting a watch made from a watchmaker that was founded in the 1800s. For me, this is well worth a look. Right, we come to the 200 level and anything between 100 and 200 pounds, I think the best brand to go for is Orient. Yeah. Orient are a company owned by the Edison Group who owns Seiko, so no mugs. Yes, they may have a logo that looks like it came from a cigarette packet, but they make great watches with in-house movements that are reliable, workhorses, and are gonna last a long time. So as my gift to you, I'm gonna give you one and a bonus one in this category. The first one is a watch I bought a long, long time ago, 
and I'm still impressed with. And the first one to show you is the Ray 2. Fantastic automatic mechanical watch with an aluminium insert, 200 meters of water resistance, a semi-decent bracelet, and there's enough brushing and polishing on that Ray 2 for you to be able to wear that watch throughout the week. I know a lot of you like your dress watches. I don't, you know, look at me. But if I was to get a good, solid, reliable dress watch, I don't have to look much further than a Bambino. Yes, particularly this one. I love a small seconds. It reminds me of vintage British watchmaking. This is Japanese, but still. I love the three, six, and nine on the dial. I love the champagne color of the dial. You can buy these watches in 38 millimeter, 41. The leather strap looks very stiff. I don't think it's gonna be very nice. But if you spend 20 to 30 pound on an aftermarket strap, this thing's gonna look the business. Get on the Orient Express. <laughs> Okay, we've hit the 250 ceiling. It's time for a Seiko. And this is a watch I am really interested in. If you're listening, why? Because I do love a field watch and a good old fashioned sized field watch. And I am talking about the SRPJ85K1. The Seiko 5 Green Zone Midfield. These watches have taken over the SNK range. And I gotta say, this watch looks awesome. I think they've nailed the NATO strap color. I love the dial. You've got a little bit of military history there with the 24 hour markings on the inside. I'm a bit of a sucker for faux patina, I've got to be honest. Coupled with a decent sized crown, this is a very good look. Also look at that grain texture of the dial. Does remind me of some of the Hamilton khaki watches. It's water resistant to 100 meters. It's got an automatic 4R35 inside. And right now for 226 pounds, and it being a new Seiko reference, I think that's that's good. <laughs> Okay, we've come to the 300 pound mark. I'm gonna give you another Timex. Yeah, another watch that I'd like to review. The TW2V54000. A very cool titanium field watch with an automatic movement. Recently, I've really tried to love titanium, specifically in dive watches, but I can understand it a bit more in field watches. You don't need to check the watch all the time. It can be light on your wrist and it could be more comfortable. When you're climbing, running, or jumping <laughs> out in the wilderness. The watch is rather large at 41 millimeters, but only weighs 63 grams, and it's 13 millimeters thick. Now, surprising for Timex, this has a water resistance of 200 meters, and usually they're barely 50. I must admit, I really do like the look of the bead blasted titanium and the no nonsense, no frills dial, apart from the cute little mountains at 12 o'clock. This watch has been built and made for purpose and even though it has an annoying 19 millimeter lug width, I can see myself liking this and enjoying it. We do have an exhibition screw in case back which is a little bit pointless, particularly when you've got Expedition North written in big letters all over it. There is something about this watch, Timex but at a higher level and I think I'd be pretty chuffed if I was given this as a gift. Hello. 350 now, and it's a Citizen. Yes, this watch has interested me for a long, long time. But we are talking about the JP2000-08. E. Yep, this is no shrinking violet. This is 44 millimeters in diameter. It is a diver certified watch with a certificate to prove it. And it's also Ani Digi. The big war on the left is the depth alarm. So type in a depth, you don't want to go down, and if you go down further than that depth, you'll get a absolutely pointless for anyone that isn't diving. But I just think it looks cool. We got a great knurled screwing crown at four o'clock and pushes around that case for the digital screen. Mark my words, I'll be getting one soon, even though it may look quite ridiculous on me. Under 400 pounds. I don't know about you, but I'd like to try the new Seiko 5 GMTs. I'm a lover of blue, so I'm gonna go for the SSK003K1, otherwise known as the Batman Blueberry. Obviously taking inspiration from the Rolex Batman GMT. Also, it's a reinterpretation of the old SKX, isn't it? Seiko actually came out with a new in-house GMT movement. This is a pretty decent offering for me and very far removed 
removed from the SKX as it's more a traveler's watch now than a diver. It's 100 meters water resistant. You can get these in other colors like a black version, but this is another example of paying 371 pounds and just having one watch. If only I could do that. You know it's gonna be reliable. You know it's gonna be good in the dark if you like being in the dark. I think this is a good one. Um, could you just click that like button please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Okay, we've come to my final choice and it's from a company called Bulliver. Didn't see that coming, did ya? I'm talking about the Bulliver Millships Dive Watch. Yes, when this first came out, it was quite pricey. It's still a little bit pricey for what you get, but it is very cool. Now, back in the 1950s, the US Navy were looking for a dive watch. Bulliver made prototypes for the pitch to the Navy. Bulliver didn't get the contract and they scrapped this reference. Where? Now, a huge, huge, big Bulliver fan had one of these prototypes and showed it to the Bulliver company now. They didn't even know it existed. Anyway, the company decided to make a like for like copy and here it is. And you can tell Bulliver used a lot of Blancpain 50 Fathoms inspiration here. But these are the sorts of watches I love. Built for purpose, no thrills. This watch has a few quirks to it. In order to twist this bezel, you gotta push it down and then you can twist it. Something that was in the prototype, if you see below the hand stack, that there is a moisture detector. The color will change if there is moisture inside the watch. The case back is funny as well. Just like the Vostok Amphibias, it's made of two parts. You've got an inner case back and then an outer ring that screws the gaskets in. Again, a feature of the prototype. It's 41 millimeters and that was the same size as that prototype. The only couple of annoying things for me, the Lug width is 16 millimeters, which is very tiny. Bulliver are owned by Citizen, who owns Myota. They could have put a 9000 series in it. They chose the 8000. And it's your bargain basement automatic movement. The automatic rotor only goes one way, so you can really hear it and feel it on the wrist. But for all those quirks, some of them annoyances, it's a watch with a great little story. And for 439 pounds, this is a great little watch. <laughs> So there you go, 10 watches that I would buy myself on Amazon right now. Like I said, affiliate links to all these watches are down below in the description. And certainly look out for some of these watches in future reviews. Thank you for watching till the end, I'm very grateful. And if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you click this one? Oh, sensational. One of the best. Go on, click it, click, click it, click it.